Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to talk about the possible showdown between Gilliman and Abaddon. I know what you're thinking, you've already done this video, what is this repeat about what is going on? Why are we talking about this again? You're right, we have already done this video, and I stand by a lot of what I said in that video, whereby we're kind of in a position where neither of them can afford to lose. You're not going to bring a brand new model out for Abaddon and then have his face get caved in, that would be ridiculous. And you can't have Gilliman get his face caved in, because he is the linchpin holding the Imperium together. Defeat for either of them is not really a viable option at the moment. However, there is a couple of interesting things, especially when you look at the new Abaddon model, that kind of hint towards a possible showdown. I'm not going to say this is like a guaranteed thing, or this is totally what's going to happen. We know it. It's absolutely 100%. No, none of that. There are just some little interesting similarities and contrasts, and it could point to something that might be quite interesting. So, one of the things that, well, a couple of the things about the two models is the similarity of pose. They have a very similar posture. They have a very similar, like, the way they're standing is mirrored to each other, which is interesting enough as it is, although that could just be put down to it's the heroic leader pose. You know, we get that a lot in a lot of 40k models and a lot of Age of Sigma models as well. You can tell who the leader is because he's looking all leadery, standing there with his arm outstretched in some sort of grandiose, like, kind of display of look at me. Could just be down to that, or it could be very intentional. An intentional mirror between Gilliman and Abaddon, given their respective positions within the hierarchy of chaos and the Imperium. There's also the fact that the bases are kind of similar and have very similar, very similar themes. Gilliman is standing on the chest of a Black Legionnaire, and I mean Abaddon is standing on the chest of an Ultramarine's Primarius Lieutenant. There are little kind of symmetries going on there. Even the items to be found on the bases are in some cases quite similar. So there is something there that could hint at a a forthcoming con like conflict, or it could just be a case of they've both happened to fight each other's forces before, which we know is true. But we have a big campaign in the form of Vigilus, and those kind of similarities could just be by accident, they could just be little nods, or it could point to something a bit more interesting. The thing is, for me, it wouldn't be that interesting for them to just have a big fight and that be that. It would have to be something more than that. And the guys over at Realm and Ruin, who uh, I'll, link the, I'll link their Twitter and their their podcast down below in the description, I've pointed out something that, to be honest, I've kind of thought about a little bit, but not put two and two together. Something I've wondered a lot about Vigilus is where the hell is Dante and the Blood Angels, and given that he is the Warden of Imperium Nihilus, what is going on with their involvement, or lack thereof? Why have we not seen just more action from them? I mean, Vigilus is a vastly important place. It is one of the few safe routes from one side of the Imperium to the other, why do they seem to be ignoring it? And then it was put out there as a as a possibility, as a suggestion from Cameron from Realm and Ruin, and he said, Crazy theory time. Abaddon will kill Dante as Gilliman arrives mere moments too late. This would be a good mirror for Horus, Sanguinius, and the Emperor, and it opens up Dante for a potentially life-saving Primaris treatment slash Sanguinius possession. Discuss. So we're going to. I actually really like that. As a theory, I really like that, because it's way more interesting, and it is way more high stakes than just the, the idea of these two titans of their respective factions just going at each other. Having Dante show up on Vigilus and having to face down Abaddon and getting defeated would actually be a significant and a significant change for the Imperium. It would show that, yes, we do have things in the form of Primaris, and yes, they are making a difference, but we also have enough organization and enough well, chaos, caused by chaos, that heroes of the Imperium are getting definitively punished. I mean, Kalgar has already had to be ascended, effectively. If Dante goes up against Abaddon, realistically, Abaddon's going to win. He is way stronger, in many different ways, and Dante is old at this point. He's not useless, he's not rubbish, he's still an incredibly skilled, and... I mean, you don't get to be as old as Dante without just being very, very good at staying alive when you absolutely shouldn't. But if there's going to be one thing that will take him out, it would be going head-to-head -head with the War Master himself. 
that would create a far more interesting storyline and a far more interesting conflict than just Gilliman showing up on Vigilus after Abaddon's already got there and going, let's have a 1v1. It would have, as Cameron pointed out, a really good mirror to what we've already seen between the War Master, between the Blood Angels, between just the Imperium and the forces of chaos as a whole. And in this case, there would be, you know, there would be a course for Dante to still survive. So the thing is, I don't think Games Workshop is going to go around killing off characters necessarily. I think that's kind of unlikely. But at the moment, they have this really sweet spot where they can take a character that has been mortally wounded and stick them in a Dreadnought, Cullen style. Or alternatively, they can take, you know, a, a lauded hero of the Imperium who has taken a massive beating. And it might be risky, but he can be essentially ascended to become Primaris. I know a lot of people might dislike the idea of yet another kind of Space Marine hero becoming a Primaris Space Marine, but to be honest, I'm fairly sure that's a bit of inevitability as it is anyway. I mean, now that the treatment has been given to Calgar, it has been categorically proved that Space Marine heroes can just be taken and just given the treatment. Sure, you could lose a few along the way, but it's a lot easier to lose some nameless captains and commanders than it is to lose Marnius Calgar, for instance. And of course, there is the added fact that, much though, you know, Dante becoming a Primaris Marine would irritate a good number of people. If Calgar is anything to go by, it would also mean that he sells a ridiculous amount. I mean, all for all that we might complain about the kind of the sudden burst of called inventions all over the Imperium and everything is Primaris now and all of that kind of thing. It is undeniably a popular move, and Games Workshop aren't going to be looking at something as successful as Calgar and going, yeah, well, let's not do that again. No, they're going to find ways to bring all of the existing kind of named Space Marine heroes and actually bring them in line with the rest of the range as they are making it. I mean, the Primaris range now is not exactly small. If you look at the stuff in Shadow Spear, the, the overall kind of size of the Primaris range has gone up considerably. Adding Dante to that would not necessarily be a bad idea, financially speaking, let's be honest, and it would create a much more interesting narrative. It would be essentially a story repeat from way earlier in the history of that universe, yeah, but that kind of cyclical story element can prove to be interesting because it will just show the differences between what happened then and what is happening now. The Also, the kind of... Something that I would really like if that were to happen would be the... I guess the similarity in importance between, say, Terra and Vigilus. Now, obviously, Terra is the seat of humanity. Terra is not going to fall. That would be ridiculous. That would actually break the universe completely. And it would basically mean that Abaddon had won. Unless Tyranids flew in and did it, or something like that, which, obviously, that won't happen either, because the main conflict for 40k are between Chaos and the Imperium. But Vigilus is a vastly important world. I know that, again, that is a bit contentious in a way, because it's all become a bit, it's become a bit Dawn of War, let's be honest, with every race showing up and kind of going, yeah, no, we'd like that too. But I think it's been done in a reasonably sensible way, and actually having a conflict that dramatic and that big would properly cement Vigilus as essentially a, a second Cadia, if nothing else. Dante showing up, trying to fight back Harkon World Claimer and Abaddon, dueling the War Master himself, falling in battle and being rescued just in time, which admittedly is an annoying trope, would still be all more interesting than just Gilliman and Abaddon fighting out until one or the other just decides to back off and leave. If Gilliman has decided that Dante must survive, that he must be kept alive, that he must remain in charge of Imperium Nihilus, then it gives him a very good reason to essentially drop down, grab the fallen commander, and get the fuck out of there real quick. Which would make a fight between Abaddon and Gilliman, again, that little bit more interesting, because it would shift the focus from just, we're going to have this pointless battle whereby... Neither of us can win, because that's not how this story works. And it would instead become, essentially, a fighting retreat. Which also would have a really interesting mirror to the events in Betrayer from the Horus Heresy series. Gilliman having to do a fighting retreat back to his ships because he cannot stand against what's in front of him and keep things going at the same time. 
there's lots of different things that can be mirrored, that can be repeated in a more well, in a more modern context in terms of the universe as a whole. I would much prefer that to be something that happens. I know it would mean Dante becoming a primaris marine, and I know there are a lot of people who wouldn't like that specific story beat, but it'd be so much more interesting, it'd be so much more exciting than just let's have a fight and then we'll both leave. It would actually raise the stakes and it would make it that much more believable that the Imperium, whilst it's doing better than you'd expect at the moment, is still not necessarily just winning. There is still things going wrong. There is still heroes falling left, right, and centre. The flood of primary reinforcements is fine, but Chaos is also not slacking. There's a new breed of greater possessed. There are new demon engines being cranked out. The warpsmiths are going mental, creating new weapons for Havocs. For all that the Imperium is, for the moment, halting stagnation, Chaos doesn't need to halt stagnation because it can just create. Losing Dante, or nearly losing Dante, in a fight against Abaddon and having Gilliman have to rescue him and not be able to just fight and ignore what's going on around him is way more interesting. And I kind of hope that that is what happens because there are so many interesting parallels between that and stuff we've seen in the past. I would like that to be the case. The question is... Do you think that's likely? Would you like that storyline? Do you think that would be better than just a 1v1? Do you think it'd be more interesting? How are you? How do you feel about the idea of Dante becoming a Primaris Marine? I mean, we might finally get like full-on proper close combat Primaris if the Blood Angels are going for it, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, as I said, I will link the Realm and Ruin podcast and their Twitter account in the description. Go and say hello, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Click all the things if you want to. Video... Just Patreon, subscribe, all of that shit. Click it if you like, don't click it if you don't want to, and I will see you for the next one. Toodaloo.